So we've not long had the first and only free practice session of the Brazilian Grand Prix. So in this video, I'm going to go through the data, have a look at what the race pace indications are, look at Piastri versus Norris, and also clarify why Verstappen and the Ferraris ended so far down the timesheets. Okay, so first of all, here are your long runs. Now, these are the initial lower fuel long runs. So this simulates sort of more the end stages of the race. Um, and that's why they're only about two seconds slower than the quality sims. This was what happened at the very start of the session. We saw Russell shoot to the top of the times. Those were those laps. And on that pace, he is at the top. Um, so we see him here about half a tenth quicker than Hamilton, a uh, tenth and a half quicker than Verstappen, and between four and six tenths quicker than McLaren's. Now, I will say... Uh, on that. The McLarens, if you look at the speed traces, so there's a lot of data here, um, but this is the Russell stint here, so he's right at the top of the speed traces on that initial stint. Uh, he's He's got the third quickest uh, speed trap. Uh, Norris and uh, Piastri sit in uh, this area here, so a little bit slower in a straight line. Could it be more fuel? Could it be lower engine mode? Could it be both? Yes. So I'm sure there's a bit more to come from them um, and perhaps that explains this gap. Although what we should look at uh, actually is just on the McLarens. We've got Piastri actually two tenths than Norris. Now again take this with a pinch of salt. It's our first and only FP session. Um, there could be massive setup differences here. Um, however Norris um, and Piastri look pretty evenly matched. In fact uh, Piastri slightly ahead on these ones. We'll see Norris slightly ahead on the higher fuel ones in a minute. It's a decent indication for Ferrari on these runs um, and also for Red Bull. They're pretty much in the mix there so there isn't actually much you can split between these teams given that McLaren seem to be slightly higher fuel um, it all looks pretty even but these were the very first runs also we see Sainz here making a nice appearance um, very in the mix for once uh, in that Williams which is nice to see uh, will that transpire it's hard to say although his top speeds weren't anything mega um, on this run it doesn't look like they're on any sort of uh, super high engine mode uh, so could that be legitimate pace yeah on low fuel uh, perhaps they'll be up there now the second group of long runs sit out here, these are now 1 minute 13 lap times, uh, so more like 4 seconds off uh, that quality simulation pace. So we see here Norris actually slightly ahead, a few tenths ahead of Piastri on this uh, on this occasion, um, although there were a few, a couple of laps that Piastri did that were uh, very impressive. Um, so Piastri and Norris trading blows then, uh, Norris slightly faster on the high fuel, Piastri slightly faster on the low fuel. It does look like from this Piastri is back on it again. Now. Something I do notice here is uh, all the bright green from Kick Sauber. We've got this Hulkenberg stint here, not too far off Piastri's. Um, are Kick Sauber only a tenth off McLaren? Absolutely not. This is just practice. Um, but it's a positive indication. The fact that they're sitting above uh, the Alpines, which are actually uh, slightly higher up than usual, the Haas cars, the racing bulls. I'm going to tentatively predict that in dry conditions, Sauber are looking pretty good. Now, Clearly it's very difficult to compare teams, the setups haven't converged, different teammates running different rear wings, etc, etc, um, because this uh, practice is so compacted. What we can look at though a little bit more um, are teammate comparisons, uh, so we see uh, here be between Leclerc and Hamilton on their higher fuel runs, uh, there is 0 0.01 in it, uh, it's absolutely nothing, uh, those two running incredibly close together. Um, the other thing I want to point out uh, is that this Russell-Antonelli comparison, uh, Antonelli only a tenth off Russell, that is incredibly uh, impressive. Uh, I think I heard earlier that this is uh, Antonelli's first time ever driving at this track, um, not even in junior formulas uh, has he driven here, so it looks like he's doing a really good job. Um, Verstappen here sits a little bit further out, he's uh, averaging a 114.7 here on these higher fuels, fuel runs, um, whereas the McLarens 113.3, 113.5. Um, now, if we look at the top speeds, that's Verstappen stint 2 versus Piastri Norris stint 2. And what I will say about that is that Verstappen stint 2 uh, is out here. Um, so Verstappen stint 2 sits down here to the right, 314 uh, kilometers an hour in the speed traps. Uh, Piastri and Norris uh, on their stint 2, Norris up at 322 kilometers an hour in a straight line. And that does indicate perhaps Verstappen was on higher fuel. Verstappen also did a lot more laps, um, but perhaps he was also on higher fuel and or a lower engine mode. So I don't think that's something to be worried about on Verstappen's long run. And moving on to have a quick dive into the quick laps. It's a bit of a shame. We only really saw Norris and Piastri uh, really going for it. Um, we see Norris slightly quicker than Piastri sector one. 
Piastri then makes it back in sector two, um, about a tenth and a half on Norris, uh, and then Norris and Piastri incredibly close in the last sector, um, there's uh, about a tenth in that one, maybe slightly less, um, and of course we see Verstappen, Hamilton, Leclerc in all of these uh, sectors are trailing uh, because they did not do uh, full quick runs. We saw Verstappen went onto that soft tyre near the end, but he didn't complete the lap, and the Ferraris didn't even do any laps uh, on medium or soft, so uh, that is the reason for that. And if we just have a quick look uh, at the breakdown, so these are the gaps to the theoretical best lap time. Uh, we see Norris lacking in sector two slightly to Piastri, yet still uh, quicker than him, ever so slightly. Uh, Piastri uh, lacking in one and three to Norris. Uh, Russell and Antonelli have this big blue bar from sector two, um, and we're going to have a look at that in a second, because uh, they've got a slightly weird loss going on there. But overall, between Norris and Piastri, it's looking incredibly close, and between uh, the rest of the guys, you're going to have to wait till sprint quality. So now for a little bit of telemetry comparison of the fastest laps of the session between uh, Norris, Russell and Piastri. Uh, Piastri is the dotted orange line. Um, one thing I will point out, uh, Russell clearly decelerating earlier than the other guys. I still think there's more more to come from Mercedes. I don't think they've shown uh, their full hand. Um, and also that slightly odd area where they are losing a hell of a lot of time is turn six, turn seven. It's one of the few super high speed right handers. Uh, if you want to see it on the track map, it's this very quick right-hander. Uh, we've seen uh, Leclerc in it there, I think, uh, on a formation lap famously once. Um, it's that corner. And his speed trace is significantly below the other two guys. And I had a look at Antonelli. It's exactly the same thing. And this sort of high-speed corner is where Red Bull's been very strong in the past. So if I get rid of Piastri and uh, instead add Verstappen. So bear in mind, Verstappen did not do a proper performance lap. We see that in this turn six, turn seven region, Verstappen is pretty much matching Norris's um, speed, the speed that Norris has carried through. And that is a very good sign for Verstappen because clearly Verstappen here, he's, he's on higher fuel. It's, it's not a proper performance run. We see his speed trace, uh, his uh, maximum velocity be a lot lower. Same with Russell, which is why I think Russell's got more in the tank. Um, but despite that, Verstappen is carrying a huge amount of speed um, and that is very encouraging for them. Um, and I think uh, Verstappen uh, still looks pretty good here. And then just quickly to revisit Piastri versus Norris. Is Piastri's form back? Well, based on this, absolutely it is. They've got a pretty much 50-50 split. Um, here, uh, Piastri, the dotted line, Norris, the solid once again. Um, and it looks incredibly even between the two. It's very hard uh, to put much between them. Uh, Norris did slightly pit Piastri's lap at the very end of the session. He was on the best track conditions, but it is so close between them. At this point, uh, you can't really separate them. So that's all I have for you in this video. I appreciate the analysis and the insight is much more tentative than on a normal weekend where we have three practice sessions. We usually get a lot more convergence of setup and uh, teammate comparisons, etc. Um, but hopefully you have learned something from this video and uh, do come back uh, later in the weekend for much more analysis as all the pace, the comparisons, the data uh, will become ever more clear.